for weight loss, counting calories or counting carbs? I'm here to tell you the secret and it's not what you think. Tune in to learn more. Hey everybody, Kelly Alexi here, fitness fanatic, confidence coach, serial entrepreneur, and most recently, keto convert. That's right, keto convert. About a year ago, a little more than a year ago, I went keto, and so I'm guessing you might be picking up on what I'm gonna be leaning towards as far as what I'm gonna recommend, and that's gonna be what I'm gonna be doing here just recommending sharing my opinion on what's better to count or moderate when it comes to weight loss, carbs or calories. It's probably gonna be carbs. When I went keto, I was very successful. I've lost 36 inches and 30 pounds by going uh, keto. So again, as we dive into the meat no pun intended, or maybe it was. As we dive into the meat of this topic, remember, I am just sharing uh, my own experience, my own opinion, and I'm sharing this so that you can make uh, your own informed decisions. But let's get to it, shall we? All right, everybody, you know the drill. Make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. And of course, I wanna hear from you. If this video is helpful, if you have questions on anything that I'm talking about, please leave them in the comments below. I wanna hear from you. I am back. I am publishing videos on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So make sure that you leave comments. Give this video a like if you like what I'm throwing down. Give it a thumbs down if you hate it. I wanna hear from you either way so that I can make better content in the future. And of course, make sure that as you subscribe Subscribe, you hit that little bell button so that you're notified every time we put a new video out. Okay, everybody, so let's dive into the meat of this topic. Wink, wink. So obviously, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I went keto um, about a year ago, about a year and a month ago, and I lost 36 inches and 30 pounds. So clearly, I am a fan of counting carbs. I've also been somebody who prior to going keto was uh, a, a person that was uh, following religiously um, the, you know, caloric, uh, res not caloric restriction, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, oh, why am I going blank? Um, it's not caloric reduction, that's not the word I'm looking for. Uh, caloric deficit. Um, I was, you know, and this is not to say it's wrong, but we need to bring up this caloric deficit topic because this is, this is where this whole like, you know, kind of headbutting issue is, is happening online and certainly where I caught a hell of a lot of flack and I know I will in the future and where, you know, in the fitness space, there are still a lot of people who will, you know, insist that the only thing that matters is calorie deficit. That is the only way to lose weight. It's the law of thermogenics, blah, blah, blah. They refuse to consider all of this other stuff that I'm going to reference. And of course, they will also say that any, any studies that have been done that I reference, any authors that I reference, any of these published authors, um, doctors, whatever, studies, like those studies don't count. Those doctors aren't real doctors. Um, you know, they'll basically, it's, it's kind of like, well, people in politics who, who say, you know, the only news that counts is, is the news that supports what they wanted to say. Like everything else is fake news, right? It's that kind of logic, that kind of absolutely immature, you just can't win. It's, it's like, I'm only going to consider something that supports my point of view. And it's, it's really crazy. So sometimes there's, there, there's a certain type of personality that you just can't have a mature dialogue with. And there are certain people who are absolutely unwilling to consider new trains of thought, new facts, new whatever. Um, I am, but that's just me. So here's, here's what I know to be true, and here's what I'm gonna talk about in this video. Um, I'm gonna keep today's video to be a little bit informal 
and just know that I am going to talk about a lot of this stuff coming up um, on my YouTube channel. So just know that let's look at this as like a primer. Um, and I want you guys to ask as many questions as possible. I also want to be clear if there are any psychos that choose to come on here and be extremely rude, obnoxious, um, dismissive, um, you know, argumentative, like the people I've referenced, you know, I have no problem having mature dialogue but I, I am not here to debate. I'm not here to spend all day, um, you know, tit for tat, all that kind of stuff. Um, my goal is to help, um, my goal is to help women and particularly women 40 plus who like me have been struggling, unable to lose weight for years because they're suffering from insulin problems. This is an absolute real issue. Even though there are a lot of people who like these jerks I ran into on, on TikTok seem to think that this is not an issue. It is an issue. I suffered from it for years and years and years. And, and so what I'm going to do in this video is tell you what, um, what my experience was before I went keto, um, how I was, you know, basically trying to lose weight with caloric deficit, how it did not work. Um, refresh your memory with the fact that w what changed, I basically leapt into keto, kept my calories exactly the same, lost weight effortlessly. And then I'm gonna share with you in closing um, some excerpts from some of this. Most specifically, I've got, I just brought four of the, the books, um, two of which I've read, and then two that are going to be on my next step reading, and, and all of which I will link below. Um, but I'm going to reference because they are all relevant to this conversation. Um, and then, then we'll, we'll wrap, wrap up this discussion for today. But I think what you'll be able to walk away with from this discussion today is an understanding of why I would say that I recommend counting carb, what I know to be true now, I would say emphatically to anybody, here's what I would say. What I know to be true now, I would say to anybody wanting to lose weight, if I had to choose, I would say you need to be aware of caloric, you need to be aware of how much food you're eating. Everybody does. Everybody should be starting with caloric deficit, bottom line. If caloric deficit isn't working for you after a while, then you should absolutely probably get some blood work done, but then you should be looking at, at carbs. And if you're a 40 plus woman, you should be getting blood work done and you should absolutely be looking at keto without question. And then that, you know, to summarize you, in my opinion, if you're that 40 plus woman and you've been trying to lose weight and you feel like nothing's working, you're working out, nothing is working, you're gaining weight around your middle, um, and you feel like you just can't lose weight no matter what, in my opinion, in my opinion, I think you probably have an insulin issue just like me, and I think that if you start cutting your carbs and even maybe go so far as to go keto, like I did, I think you will probably have tremendous success. You also need to keep in mind that your hormones are a huge factor. So if you are not addressing your hormones, um, that is something to keep in mind. Uh, not addressing your hormones, not getting your blood work done. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't if I didn't mention that. So up front, that's that's what I would say before I get into all of this stuff. So, what was my uh, experience before going keto? Um, I have been a fitness fanatic since starting to work out. <laughs> way back in the days of Tybo. Um, I started off as a cardio bunny, then I started working out to weights with the firm workouts, then I discovered Kathy Friedrich. Um, I mean, I have been working out basically since graduating college and getting into corporate America and starting to kind of gain some weight there. Um, I've never really been happy with my body. I had been on the, I've been on the pill since age 19 and 
if I reflect back now, I realized that at, once I went on the pill, I really started to gain some weight. I just didn't see it at the time. And I think that's when my body started to just get to the point where it was never going to be easy for me to be slim. It wasn't that I was fat. I was just uh, the curvy girl. I was like a Kardashian kind of a figure. I was always very curvy and I was just never naturally lean. I have a younger sister who is a very much more of an athletic type build. I was never that lean athletic type build. I was always the more like Jennifer Lopez, Kim Kardashian, you know, hourglass figure. Um, it worked in a way, it didn't work in a way. Um, so uh, luckily I found fitness, luckily I liked fitness. I've been working out, um, again, since I graduated college, um, and, and it worked for me. It helped me stay at a certain a certain weight, but I also never really felt like I, was happy with my body. I mean, I was always, I, I got to an okay point, but I, I never felt like I was like fully confident. Um, when I hit 40, I was going through a divorce, definitely started to notice my body start to change. And then it got just progressively harder and harder and harder. Um, I think it was in 2015. That's when I finally got uh, to a, a functional medicine doctor, started getting blood work done, went on bioidenticals. Um, that helped in some ways. It helped with my sleep. It helped with, you know, certain things. I, I went on thyroid medication. I went on progesterone, estrogen, um, testosterone, um, and, and medicine for my thyroid. But the weight loss evaded me. And so for all of these years, then following that from, you know, 2015 up until recently, I just continued to work out, work out, work out, diet, diet, diet. I was always dieting. I did not realize that you should be taking breaks from dieting. I was always dieting. And I mean, always dieting. I never stopped dieting. I was in a caloric deficit all the time. I just was, I would go from one diet to the next diet to the next diet. I was always working out six days a week. Um, did I have a cheat meal every week? Yes, but I was always fitness girl Kelly, working out six days a week, dieting, eating protein shakes, protein pancakes, finding out what the next diet was, you know, yada, yada, yada. And as the years passed, it just got harder and harder. And certainly the last three, four years, the hormone situation just got crazier and crazier. I had estrogen dominance. I had adrenal fatigue. I had cortisol issues. And, you know, I'm sure that I made it worse because I was stressed. I was running um, my own company. I had all kinds of crazy issues. I'd moved from Chicago to uh, Austin, Texas. I had some crazy issues shutting my first company down. I had to fire a bunch of people. I had a whole lot of drama in my company. There were a lot of, you know, crazy chaotic business times. So a lot of stress. Um, and I was stressing out about my body. I was pushing my body. I was doing 24 hour fasts. I was sometimes working out two times a day. I wasn't doing myself any favors, but with all of this stuff, with working out all the time, dieting all the time, I was eating 1600 calories for as long as I can remember, working out six days a week, with a trainer four of those days a week at Gold's Gym, I mean a really good trainer, writing down what I ate. I have the notebooks and I recorded them in my fitness pal. Um, and I didn't lose weight. Um, I would, you know, get weighed when I would go to my doctor and he would just look and he'd be like, you've lost, you know, two pounds. I even did the HCG diet. Um, in 2017, I was so desperate and I, cause every single time I would go see my doctor every quarter, my functional medicine doctor. And I would say, I, what am I doing wrong? Why can't I lose weight? What do we need to do with my, and I always, I always thought it was my thyroid. Um, and, and this is what I want so many of you ladies to know that are watching this. So many women think that the reason that you can't lose weight is your thyroid, but it, what my doctor taught me, my current doctor is that it's not your thyroid, it's, it's insulin. 
And then everything I'm learning in these books is that it's all about insulin resistance. We think it's, it's a, it's, it's either, you know, most people think weight loss is strictly calories in calories out. And, and gosh, what I'm learning in here is like blowing my mind. Cause he talks about why diets stop working after a certain amount of time. I mean, he addresses that in so many ways. Um, but what with women, you know, like we think when we, when we think about hormones, if we think about hormones, we think it's thyroid and we obsess over thyroid. And I did. And, um, I remember going on that HCG diet and I begged my, you know, I'd never heard of it. Really. My doctor said, well, we can try this one diet. It's kind of extreme. And I'm like, I don't care what it is. I will do it. He's like, it's 500 calories a day. And I'm like, I don't care. I'll do it. He said, you have to put shots in your legs every day. I'm like, I don't care. I'll do it. So I did it. The HCG diet, 500 calories a day. I ate nothing but crackers and deli meat or grilled chicken and cucumbers. You can eat very few things on the HCG diet. It's like minimal fat. You could, so you could only have like, that's what I had. Grilled chicken, cucumbers, and these, these saltine crackers things because they had no fat in them. And I, I ate like five or five to 700 calories a day. And I did it for like 12 weeks and I did have a body composition change. So it looked like I'd lost weight. I mean, it really did. My jeans were much looser and whatever, but on the scale, I only lost two pounds. There was something with my body, it would not lose weight. It would not lose fat. I mean, I don't know if what, what I should say there, if it's like, I wasn't losing fat or I wasn't losing weight, but I, I went from, I, at the time I was 161 and I only went down to 159. I'm five, five, by the way. Um, so you guys, I was doing everything to lose weight. I could not lose weight. I was eating 1600 calories. When I hired this new functional medicine doctor, she, she said, I need six more months to work on your hormones and then we'll, we'll put you on a diet and I'll give you the diet. When she gave me the diet and I looked at the macros, I'm like, oh hell no, because it was keto. I thought keto was the biggest joke ever. I didn't want to do it. I thought people would laugh at me. I thought keto was a joke. But guess what? It was the one thing I hadn't done. And I, I remember thinking after she gave me several podcasts to listen to that, that explained why keto is perfect for women with hormonal imbalance and insulin issues. And then she had me read a couple books. She had me read the longevity diet and the, she didn't want me, she read, had me read the longevity diet because she wanted me to understand why she didn't want me eating as much protein as before. Not because she wanted me to go on the longevity diet. Um, she wanted me to dramatically decrease my protein. I only have about 50 to 60 grams of protein a day now. Um, and, and she said a little bit later, we might increase my protein slightly. But in other words, I was used to having 130 to 140 grams of protein a day. Now I have like 50 to 70 grams of protein. It's so wonderful to not have to worry about that much. But I finally decided to go keto begrudgingly. And I'm so glad that I opened my mind and I did it because clearly it transformed my life. It was, it was the easiest thing to do. It has been the easiest way to lose weight. It has been the most enjoyable way to lose weight. I eat foods I love. I've been able to drink alcohol and lose weight. I've been able to drink alcohol this whole time. Um, I have been able to enjoy foods I love. Um, my body looks better than it ever has in my entire adult life. I am feeling great in a bikini again. I am most of my Poshmark, by the way, I'll link down my Poshmark closet. You should go check it out. I still have a good amount of clothes up there. Um, I, because nothing fits, everything is huge on me. Um, life-changing, life-changing. And it is, fascinating to me when I have been doing reading. The first book that I read, the first book I read actually was by Dr. Joseph Mercola, and that was uh, a keto, oh, I'll link up to it. I can't remember the title. Um, keto, 
uh, please forgive me. It's his second book about keto. And that was really interesting. My husband is is reading his 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 other book right now called Fat for Fuel. And my husband is not even keto. <laughs> I'll be right out, babe. And here's what's so funny. Here's what's here's what's so interesting. So my husband's not even keto. And he he saw these books that I ordered and he picked up the second book that I ordered by Dr. Mercola called Fat for Fuel. He started reading it in the morning and he's literally like, do you mind if I take out a highlighter? And he's highlighting half the book and reading it to me. And he's starting to, of course he's not gone keto, but he's adjusted his diet and he's like, this is amazing. Like everything that he's, he's learning in the book and he's made some adjustments to his diet based on what he learned in that book. So that was the first book I read was by Dr. Joseph Mercola uh, about keto. And then the second book I read, which was unbelievable, was this one, which is basically like literally the case. Like this is literally like this guy going out and saying, I am doing research on why keto is good. This is links to studies. It's basically like, like he's presenting a legal case for like, like you're in court and you're listening to somebody go, why should, why should I consider it's fascinating. You, you need to read this book. And so then, um, my doctor, I wrote to my doctor and I said, Hey, this was after that crazy video I told you, um, on TikTok went viral. And I said, look, I have a lot of people who are attacking me because I'm talking about, you know, insulin resistance and, and, and they're, they're telling me it's not true. And it's all about the law of thermodynamics and blah, blah, blah. I said, what, what were the, the videos and the books that you told me to read? You know, because I know it's, you were, you were telling me that the whole calories in, I was asking my doctor this, I said, you were telling me it's not that this whole calories in calories out thing has been disproven multiple times. And in, in so many scientific studies, what books can I reference? And she, she said, this is what I should read next. So then I ordered this, but then I discovered this guy. Um, now I haven't, I haven't read this. I have not read this yet. So these are on deck, but then I discovered this guy on Instagram. He, um, and, and I'm also going to link up to another gal. Her name is, oh, shoot. I will, I will link her up below, but she is an expert on insulin resistance that I found on YouTube through, she did an interview with him. Also, I don't know if I'm saying his last name correctly, Peter Atia. He does a tremendous amount of research and interviews everybody. Um, he was keto for a while, um, but I have to just in closing, read you a couple of excerpts from, I've, on, I've only gotten through not even half of this book. And I just want to, gosh, it got dark in here all of a sudden. In closing, read you a few of these things because this is just mind boggling you guys when you think about it. Um, I've, I, I feel like I've, I've underlined like this entire book so far. Um, and you've, you've got it. You've got to get this book cause I think you'll get it and it will explain a lot for you. So give me two seconds. Here's, so here's one of the first things which I really appreciated, especially because of a lot of people who are yelling and being nasty to me. Um, thermodynamics, because because again, this is what a lot of people were saying to me, like when I was saying, um, you know, so many women, if you're if you're 40 plus and you're not able to lose weight just with caloric deficit, um, you probably have insulin resistance, and you really should look into um, keto because keto is probably going to help you. And they're like, no, no, it's just calorie. The only way to lose weight is caloric deficit. It's don't you know? It's the law of thermodynamics. And this guy says, thermodynamics, a law of physics, has minimal relevance to human biology for the simple reason that the human body is not an isolated system. Energy is constantly entering and leaving. In fact, the very act that we are most concerned about, eating, puts energy into the system. Food energy is also excreted from the system in the form of stool. Having studied a full year of thermodynamics in university, I can assure you that neither calories nor weight gain were, were mentioned a single time. So that's one. Um, 
hold on, I need to make sure that I don't miss anything. I think it's mostly after this, the, the good stuff. Um, with the model of the calorie balancing scale, we assume that fat gain or loss is essentially unregulated and that weight gain and loss is under our conscious control. But no system in the body is unregulated like that. Hormones tightly regulate every single system in the body. The thyroid, parathyroid, sympathetic, parasympathetic, respiratory, circulatory, hepatic, renal, gastrointestinal, and adrenal systems are all under hormonal control. So is body fat. The body actually has multiple systems to control body weight. The problem of fat accumulation is really a problem of distribution of energy. Too much energy is diverted to fat production as opposed to, say, increasing body heat production. The vast majority of this energy expenditure is controlled automatically, with exercise being the only factor that is under our conscious control. Um, he also talked about, um, there was this... Um, Hold on. If we reduce daily calorie intake by 500 calories, we assume that one pound of fat per week is lost. Does that mean in 200 weeks we would lose 200 pounds and weigh zero pounds? Of course not. The body must at some point reduce its caloric expenditure to meet the lower caloric intake. It just so happens that this adaptation occurs almost immediately and persists long term. The, and then there is this Minnesota starvation experience experiment that they referred to where they had, I think, 35 men who went from uh, 3,500 calories a day to, to 1,700 calories. And in this experiment, they should have, based on their caloric reduction, they should have lost 78 pounds, but they, uh, the actual weight loss was only 37 pounds, less than half of what was expected. More and more severe caloric restriction was required to continue losing weight. Sound familiar? What, what they're showing in this is that when you, when you restrict your calories, um, what happens is that your body restricts, doesn't have the same um, resources to spend energy on um, everything that it needs to spend energy on, which is um, calories are needed to heat the body. Fewer calories are available, so body heat was reduced. Feeling cold, I've had that happen. Um, calories are needed to pump the blood. Fewer calories are available, so the pump slowed down. Heart rate and stroke volume decreases. Um, calories are needed to maintain blood pressure. Fewer calories are available, so the body turned the pressure down. Result, blood pressure decreased. Calories are needed for brain function, so the brain is very metabolically active. Fewer calories were available, so cognition was reduced. Result, lethargy and inability to con concentrate. Calories are needed to move the body. Fewer calories were available, so movement was reduced. Result, weakness during physical activity. This is what they're, they're talking about, what happens when you reduce the calories from like 3,000 to 1,500 or 2,000 to 1,500, your body has less calories to use for all of these other things that it normally uses. So then this is the result. It's like, I'm not gonna use all of these calories. So all of these other bodily processes are available and it affects your output. Um, and then because of that, your metabolism slows down. Um, then they had this other study, get this, the National Institutes of Health recruited 50,000 postmenopausal women for the most massive, expensive, ambitious, and awesome dietary study ever published, 2006. The Women's Health Initiative Dietary Modification Trial arguably the most important dietary study ever done. The trial aimed to confirm the cardiovascular health and weight reduction benefits of a low-fat diet. The results were telling. Um, they divided the group into two groups. Um, hold on. The group, uh, the average weight of the participants was around 170 pounds. They were followed for seven years. The group received dietary counseling, succeeded daily calories. Oh, let's say this, blah, 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 blah. Um, fat as a percentage of calories decreased from 38% to 29% and carbohydrates increased from 44% to 52%. The women increased their daily physically act, physical activity. Okay, so the group that they, the, the group that should have, they were thinking would lose weight, um, daily calories dropped from 1788 to 1446 a day. They, so they reduced their calories by 342 calories a day over seven years. 
fat as a percentage of calories decreased from 38% to 29%. Carbs increased from 44% to 52%. So this is based on the standard American diet, basically. The women increased their daily physical activity by 14%. The control group continued to eat the same higher calorie and higher fat diet to which they were accustomed. The results were telling. The eat less, move more group started out terrifically, averaging more than four pounds of weight loss over the first year. By the second year, the weight started to be regained, and by the end of the study, there was no significant difference between the two groups. Um, reduced metabolism accompanies weight loss, but that's only the beginning. Um, the calories in calories out plan for weight loss assumes that we have conscious control over what we eat, but this belief ignores the extremely powerful effect of the body's hormonal state. There are two major adaptations to caloric, caloric reduction. The first change, as we have seen, is a dramatic reduction in total energy expenditure. The second key change is that the hormonal signals uh, stimulate hunger increase. The body is pleading with us to eat in order to regain the lost weight. The evolutionary survival strategy has a single purpose, to make us regain the lost weight. Um, this has nothing to do with a lack of willpower or any kind of moral failure. So again, I'm just starting to, to get into this, but um, then in the next um, chapters, he talks all about insulin, how cortisol uh, affects insulin, um, how, hold on. The body has a set weight. Hold on. Oh, and then lastly, here's what I wanted to share. This one last example. This is a good thing to close on since this is what we're talking about is carbs, right? Sam Felton, a qualified master personal trainer, has worked in the UK health and fitness industry for more than a decade. Not accepting the caloric restriction theory, reduction theory, he set out to prove it false, following the grand scientific tradition of self-experimentation. In a modern twist to the classic overeating experiments, Felton decided that he would eat 57, 94 calories a day and document his weight gain. But the diet he chose was not a random 57, 94 calories. He followed a low carb, high fat diet of natural foods for 21 days. Felton believed based on clinical experience that refined carbohydrates, not total calories caused weight gain. The macronutrient breakdown of his diet was 10% carbs, 53% fat and 37% protein. Standard caloric calculations predicted a weight gain of about 16 pounds. Actual weight gain, however, was only 2.8 pounds. Even more interest interesting, he dropped more than an inch from his, scale, from his waist measurement. He gained weight, but it was lean mass. Perhaps Felton was simply one of those genetic lottery people who were able to eat anything and not gain weight. So in his next experiment, he abandoned the low carb, high fat diet. Instead, for 21 days, he ate 57, 93 calories per day of a standard American diet with lots of highly processed fake foods. The macronutrient breakdown of his new diet was 64% carbs, 22% fat, and 14% protein, remarkably similar to the US dietary guidelines. This time his weight gain almost exactly mirrors that predicted by the calorie formula, 15.6 pounds. His waist size positively ballooned by 3.6 inches. After only three weeks, he was developing love handles. I think that's good to close on. Hope I gave you a little taste of what, I mean, can you just see like I'm reading that book and everything I read, I'm just like. Um, so I'm sure that I'm gonna get some comment from somebody saying, oh, Jason Fung, he, he's a serial killer. He's, he's, he doesn't count those studies. Oh, I almost knocked down my tripod. <laughs> anyway, my husband just got home. We are making, you know what we're making for dinner, dinner tonight? Here's our keto dinner. This is also one of the other selections from my keto cookbook that is out. I'm linking that down below. You can grab that for just $27 and you should. It has a list of uh, 54 recipes that I uh, ate during my uh, weight loss. Um, they're delicious, but we are making Salisbury steak with uh, mashed potatoes. We make these great mashed potatoes with using Yukon Gold. Uh, potatoes and this um, really good bouillon that makes them so ridiculously tasty. We make them in the um, instant pot and then we're gonna make broccoli. So we'll have mashed potatoes, broccoli and Salisbury steak. Oh my God, I'm just my mouth is watering just thinking about it, I just can't wait. So anyway, I will link down to everything below. You guys have a great Friday night and um, I will see you here back on Monday. Um, 
Let me know what questions you guys have. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time on The Kelly O Show. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I hope this video was helpful. Of course, ask questions if you have them and I am hooking you up to my keto playlist with tons of videos that I think might entertain and inform you even further.